Hello friends, welcome to our course Threat Hunting in Cyber World. So in this part, we'll be looking at hunting web shells. So what is a web shell? Web shell is basically a script which is written in any kind of supporting language with respect to the target web server. May it be ASP.NET, may it be PHP or any other language. And then we we'll upload those kind of a script to uh, be able to access a remote machine of the system. So such scripts are are being written so that it can be uploaded on the target web server and then we would be able to get a remote access of the machine using those web shell so it's mostly written in php and asp majority of the web shells are written in php and asp multiple attack techniques can be used to upload web shell on a web server so uh, you can use your web application attack scenarios like cross-site scripting sql injection lfi rfi remote file injection or local file inclusion attacks now most popular web shells in the market you can say c99 php shell r57 shell so this web shells has been defined with an aim of getting a remote access of the machine so now how to look out for or how to hunt out for any kind of web shells which are present in your environment so for doing that we need to first understand the aim of web shell so the aim of the web shell is to actually give us the remote connection. So as when an attacker uploads a web shell onto the website or a web server, the aim of the attacker is to get a remote access of the machine when once the web shell is being executed over there. So the first way of hunting web shell is to look out for reference to any kind of suspicious keywords within files such as eval or command prompt like command.exe. So this is a way you can check out for this keywords specific within the files which are present on your web server at once if you get any kind of alert basically referring to this kind of keywords it may be a suspicious uh, script out there so how can you search those things in your operating systems for linux under where a wwwstable directory which is the directory for your web server you can search any kind of php files with any suspicious commands so that's the command for you where you need to find a type of file which is anything with a PHP extension and what you need to grab out for you need to grab or search out for such commands like keywords such as FSOC open mail execution evaluation system base 64 decoding something like that so basically a script which basically uh, encodes something and then put into the uh, script you can use there is a command of base 64 decode which is uh, trying to decode the script and execute it so these are the various ways wherein you can hunt web shell using manual approach for windows you can use powershell prompt to check out for any kind of suspicious keywords which are there in your file or web server location so using various tools as well we can hunt out for web shells in your environment so what are the various tools we can use there are various tools which has been integrated or prepared by various security researchers like Loki IOC scanner, which is basically used IOC scanners, which is integrating with the help of the IOCs, which are already present, and then they scan out for any kind of indicators of compromise into your system to look out for any kind of maliciousness. PHP malware finder, and PHP Linux malware detector, invoke exchange web shell hunter, and many more. So these are the various techniques which you can use uh, or various tools which you can use to look out for web shells in your environment. These are all tool based. So we can quickly look at some of those scanners. So this has been again developed by Florian Roth. This is the Loki IOC scanner. So it is basically detecting any kind of maliciousness into your systems based on the four criteria of file name IOC wherein it will be ma matching the file name along with the help of the regex a yara rule match so yara signatures have been matched based on the file data and process memory hash check and c2 back connect check this are various ways wherein this simple ioc scanner of loki works so let's so in addition to these techniques we can also use baselining deviation and file stacking techniques which we have already discussed in our last part so baselining techniques and file stack techniques can be used to hunt out for web shells in your environment as well.
anything getting deviated from the base lining uh, can uh, pop out an alert saying that these are the kind of maliciousness which has been observed in your environment and then we can look out for any kind of uh, threats or hunt out for the threats based on a manual approach. So in addition to the hunting web cell, let's move on to our next topic, which is endpoint hunting. So why is endpoint important in a threat hunting feature or the endpoint logs are more important as compared to any other logs with respect to threat hunting? Because endpoint is where the malware behavior is more prevalent or where you are able to see the malware behavior in a more clear way, wherein the malware moves from a temporary folder of uh, carrying from one process to another then to another process. So that's where a malware behavior is more prevalent. Most of the post exploitation techniques can be hunted using endpoint logs. So various post exploitation techniques such as persistence, privilege escalation, invasion and exfiltration, all those techniques can be hunted down using your endpoint logs. So what are the various kinds of logs you require? A file activity, registry activity, process level activities, all those activities can be used to hunt out for any kind of malicious behaviorness. Multiple attack techniques such as DLL injection, hook injection, DLL hijacking, fuzzy hashing can be hunted down using your endpoint logs. So that's where your endpoint logs comes into picture. And that's where any kind of tool such as EDR, endpoint detection and response is very useful in performing threat hunting because endpoint detection and response collects file level activities, registry level activities, your process level activities, all those logs, file creation, deletion, file rename, registry creation, deletion, or any kind of uh, misuse, process creation, process uh, deletion, something like that. So in that scenarios, if you can use a malware behavior and hunt it based on your understanding, as you already have the logs out there in EDR or any kind of SIM solution, that's where your threat hunting would be very much effective. So attack miter is the best way to utilize the efforts and use this out for hunt out for the threats. So one such example which we can be looking out for is DLL hijacking. So DLL hijacking is nothing but a post exploitation technique. So before looking onto this, let's understand what exactly is DLL hijacking. So in very basic terms, DLL hijacking is nothing but a way of attackers to execute some unexpected code onto your machine. So how can an attacker execute those code? So they would be able to find out any such kind of a DLL onto your machine in any kind of a vulnerable application which on which the path is not defined. So such kind of DLLs has been identified like any of the applications like VLC or Adobe or any kind of applications. Attackers do try to find out any such DLLs on which there is something like the path has been not identified or not defined something like that. So in such scenarios, the attacker will replace such kind of DLLs with the help of a malicious DLL and then that's how they would be able to run their DLL or a malicious DLL into the application and every time an application runs, this malicious DLL will also be executed. So that's where that file could be executed when the user runs an application that is vulnerable to DLL hijacking. So that's where a DLL hijacking comes into picture. So this is also attack my uh, website where it has explained what exactly is DLL hijacking, which is a search order hijacking is just a way of identifying the DLLs based on the main folder and then looking out for the other folders. So various families of malware have used such kind of a techniques over and over time. And the mitigation techniques have also been implemented or it has been noted down here by the MITRE team, wherein you need to look out for any kind of techniques or new DLS to execute these techniques. So that's why it will look out for any kind of Windows binaries, look out for the Windows calls. So that's how will be our technique to hunt out for DLL hijacking. So monitoring of Windows API calls, monitoring of Windows registry path for any kind of changes. That's where I told you that your registry level activities, your file level activities will come into picture. So those logs are very much important for us. So in this path, uh, the internal process involves like virtual allow X API call, which reserves or changes the region onto the memory, then write process memory writes data and then create remote thread would create any kind of a new thread into the address space of another process. 
so that's how a DLL hijacking works and you need to monitor the windows calls as well as windows registry path for any kind of changes so that's where your hunting comes into picture so next example is app init dls so what are app init dls so basically app init dls are dls which basically the dls which are specified into this folder of registry key local machine software microsoft windows and the current version windows and there is the app init dls so any kind of dls which are specified under this category are loaded by user dll into every process that loads user dll so that's a very critical place where attacker can place their maliciousness so if any kind of malicious script or a dll is placed inside app and dls whenever any kind of application uses user to dll this app and dll also will get loaded into the memory or every process so powershell can so this is where app and dls is a very critical so what are the various ways you can monitor this so you just look out for any kind of changes with respect to the registry if any kind of changes are made to this registry you need to look out for those because this is a very critical place where attackers might place their maliciousness into the endpoint environment and that's where your endpoint logs will come into picture so similar to those these two techniques like dll hijacking app and dls there are tons of techniques by which attackers will try to or an adversary will try to get into your environment or do some post exploitation into your environment and once slowly and steadily they will be passing from one step to another like they will be looking out for the execution and then privilege escalation and then uh, compromise and then persistence and then data exfiltration so that's how you need to apply a knowledge which is out there in miter attack framework understand the attack understand the mitigation techniques and once you understand the mitigation techniques you then need to try and make any kind of search query or any kind of a data analysis which can be used in your sim or threat hunting platform so that's it for this part in the endpoint hunting we'll be looking at network hunting in our next part thank you very much bye bye